Hi guys, Chris here from Tuma and we're back and we have the one and only and super awesome <laughs> Rabia Masad on the show. Hello. Hey man, really cool that you're here. Thank you very much for having me. It's Absolutely. good to be here. Uh, so this time you're here to, um, to show us and talk a little about the new Chapman guitars. Yes. Which you are heavily involved with, right? Yeah, this time especially. You know, I had ideas on colors and construction types and hardware types and pickups, especially pickups. You know, so the whole time it was really collaborative. It's cool to have somebody yeah. in a team who was like super detailed, oh, you know, massively. orientated. Yeah. I think everyone is meticulous in a very specific sense. Like Rob's very meticulous about how a guitar plays, so he's always there doing, checking out the action. <laughs> and, and Johnny is all about measurements. Matt's all about the, the little details no. visually. I'm, I'm all about the, the nice sort of touches, you know, like the lo open cog locking yeah. tuners and yeah. stuff like that, you know. Just the little things that make the guitar feel a bit more premium, you know, like the rolled edges on the fretboard. Yeah, oh, that's, that, you feel it right away. Yeah. You just touch the guitar and it's like, ooh. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, totally. Sweet. The pickups, which uh, Rob told already, and you are... Um, yeah, you, I have spec the one. those, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's um, something what you don't find everywhere, like mm. spec pickups for models. Yeah, that's, model specific stuff. That's something really, really interesting. And um, well, because it's always one of those things where sometimes you buy a guitar from a guitar shop and it's got X, Y, and Z style pickups in it across a range of guitar. Yeah. And you're kind of like, well, but this is a bit different to that one. Isn't sure. it? Maybe it should it's have like a different mahogany. voice. It should have different totally. pickups or, or a different scale length or something. Yeah, yeah and it all makes a difference to yeah. the way it re resonates and sounds. So I figured, why not just complement it with a, a pickup that works best? That's, that's um, another, another example of this <laughs> attention to the detail, what, what uh, makes a hell of a lot of sense, if you ask me. Your signature guitar. Yes. It's been there for a while, but it has. it's been upgraded as well. It has. What, what are the specs right now? Well, so I had the ML1 beer for a long time, and I, I suppose the really brief backstory on the whole signature thing at the time, you know, with Rob owning the company and all that kind of stuff, it was very much a hey, do you want to make a signature guitar kind of thing? And I was like, yeah. do I really deserve a signature guitar? I'm not, you know, like this whole thing. So it was very much a fantasy kind of journey for me with the fact that I was a huge Nuno Betancourt fan. Uh, and so I tried to make a guitar that very much spoke to me in that sense. It was very yeah. inspired by that along with a couple of other guitars. But then when it came round to doing this one, it had been a few years and I'd definitely kind of grown as a player, as a musician, as a just whatever, you know, working yeah, within yeah. the company. So I had a lot of time to think about what I'd actually want as a guitar that f felt like it was my guitar, yeah, yeah. as opposed to something that felt like it was paying respect to something else. So the ML3 beers <clears throat> basically are, are, are an amalgamation of all my influences. So, so, interest, so it's an Alder body, which is the same wood that was on the ML1 beer, yeah, which yeah. is the same wood that they use in the Nuno Betancourt guitar. And then we've got a solid Paduk neck. Well, it's a three-piece, but it's solid Paduk. And that's the same wood that they use on the, some of the Nuno Betancourt guitars. Right. And I own, uh, I, I own both an Alder version of the Nuno Betancourt guitar and the Paduk one. So I have experience in both these woods. And I knew that the Paduk was super sturdy when you travel around the world. It's not gonna, you're not gonna do, do too much truss rod adjustment. Um, Really stable, really you know, solid feeling necks, and again with the with the open pour finish, it's super fast. Yeah. So you so it didn't really get in the way, and also it's a it, because I down tune a lot. The cool thing with this wood is that it's snappier than maple or mahogany. Oh really? It's like a dense version of mahogany, uh -huh. it's heavier, more dense. Yeah. So it's snappier when you combine it with ebony, you get a lot of percussive sound from uh -huh. the fretboard, which yeah. I really really like, but. Because, it's, because I also play downtune modern style music, when you downtune, you still retain the clarity, you still retain that per percussive element. So, because I tune to drop C most of the time, or in this case, drop A. Yeah. So it's yeah. nice to have that combination so that you get the clarity, but then the Alder gives you the mid-range sure. presence. Sure. And then it's just nice to have a, a nice maple cap on top that looks pretty. Um, I used to have a Floyd Rose on my guitars, yeah. I got rid of the Floyd Rose. Okay. Just because I was like, every time you, when you go on stage and you haven't changed your strings for a couple of gigs because you know you haven't had time and you're like, oh my god, if this goes, I'm ruined. The whole gig's ruined. <laughs> yeah. So that was a yeah. nuisance. Yeah. On top of restringing, takes twice as long, and like you know, so many things like that. And I thought I've got enough guitars with Floyd's yeah. on. Yeah. 
uh, and it's still a tremolo, so you can still do tricks, you can still dive bomb, do those kind of things, but it's, more, it's got locking tuners now, it's more s stable for thicker strings, hitting them hard, gigging. Sure, sure. It's a gigging guitar, both of them are. Have you noticed some uh, changes in sound? Yeah. Uh, because, because you changed the, uh, the Floyds to traditional vintage tremolo? Yeah, I mean, one thing that Floyd Roses do is ha add a lot more high mids. Yeah. So like when you're playing and, uh, and if you want that tone, it's great for lead, it's really good sustain. Whereas with this, it's warmer, thicker. Um, and I think that's partly due to, to the fact that it's got a huge brass block in the back now, which, which is well, great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's just the way that the construction has just made it a bit fatter sounding, along with the fact that it's a bolt-on, yeah. which yeah. I specifically wanted, which I suppose you could argue is not a... Some the people, classiest way yeah, to... Yeah, some, some people play. go, oh, but set throughs, set necks, neck throughs, you know, that's all premium stuff. Whereas with this was tonally, I want, the tonally I wanted a bolt on because yeah. a bolt on is a snappier tone yeah. than, a, yeah. than a set through, which is smoother, is more sustained. Exactly. So there, there's a lot of, and then the glow in the dark side dots, stainless steel frets. I think just the general gist of the guitar was to be visually pretty, but it has to be super solid for gigging because that's what I do most of. So it had to be able to take a battering and uh, sound good and be stay in tune. Yeah. yeah. Um, with regards to the pickups, I spec'd out, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of a uh, pickup brand from the UK, um, which you might know of, and I used them a lot. And so when it came time to design our own guitars, unfortunately we weren't able to supply the guitars with those pickups. So I went and designed a pickup that I figured, I didn't want it to be identical, because I don't think that's right to do, yeah. but what I wanted to do was combine something that had the aggression and the power and the clarity in lower tunings, but it still sounded thick and warm in, in a standard tuning like this. Yeah, yeah. On top of the, f so it's kind of a mix between that kind of modern grunty humbucker that you get, as well as a PRS HFS mm. pickup. Yeah. Because yeah. I really like the HFS. I think it's a really nice warm sound. Uh, and then going for a single coil humbucker style pickup, which is, I think visually looks very cool. Yeah. But um, and they have their unique sound as well. Yeah. And, uh, due to the fact that the two uh, coils are so close together yeah. uh, to each other, you don't have that much of a of a, a phase cancellation yeah. going on. Like uh, as opposed to the real humbucker, where exactly. you have like you know one and a half centimeter or something. Mm. It's um, that, that's a unique sound. It's yeah, and it, it's made a big difference. I mean, because I my favorite neck pickup of all time is a Seymour Duncan Fifty Nine. Humbucker, because okay. it sounds stratty, but it's a bit thicker because it's a humbucker. So, and if you throw your pick on the floor, <laughs> that's also great. But, but then I thought, well, I wanted a pickup that sounded like that, but was thinner because I didn't want it to be so thick. Because I really love Fender Strats. I've I've grown to love Fender Strats over the last few years, and they're like one of my favourites now. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a bit of both. It's a bit thinner, so it's not as thick sounding, but you still get that stratty tone. But it's thicker than a Strat yeah. sounding yeah. pickup. And then being able to, and then the blending option was another thing that was big to do. Just because I used to use three-way and coil split a lot, yeah. as we were saying before. Exactly, where you have like two motions. Like yeah. First you have to switch and then you have to pull or push. Yeah, and which you this, get wrong live sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So with this, it's, you know, it's a five-way. So all the way over, you're using this. In position two, you're using the two outer coils. In position three, it's both on full. Position four, it's the two inner coils and then Five is the neck, and I figured that it it prov provided all the tones that I would use for songwriting or lead or whatever else. Right, so tonage. So this is um, sort of bridge pickup. I put it on a. This is kind of a crunch, but I'll roll off a bit of gain. So this is there. <laughs> So it's, it's loads of reverb. It's really <laughs> nice and um, thick and present. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's very thick. <laughs> Which is nice because it's got a nice, for lead, it's, all the notes sounded quite rounded. It sounds very warm and still balanced. Yeah, but Which... as soon as you 
There was gain one on like one quarters. Oh yeah, I yeah. should mention we're on the yeah. Kraken, the v Victory VX Kraken. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, gain on a quarter. Um, but this pickup is, I think it's 15K output as Whoa. well, so it's pretty hot, which is why it barks more than the other ones. But then if you go to uh, gain two or high gain, <laughs> Really, really powerful, you know? It's got, it squeals really easily. Yeah, yeah. Something else I noticed about this particular wood is that for some reason it lets harmon pinch harmonics come out way more really than easy. maple. I don't okay. know why. Okay. Um, but that's cool. Um, so that's, that's bridge pickup. You know, if I go back to a, a lower gain tone and show you what happens, I'm going to throw in a bit of reverb as well. So if we play, that's bridge, go to position two. Suddenly it's slightly less powerful, but it's got more, it's warmer. Really interesting is that even though it's split, and it's more quiet, of mm. course. You hear them right away, but it doesn't get thin. It's warm, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's not a, an easy thing to achieve because you know, in many cases, on many guitars, you have this this mm. in between sound, like with the HSH or yeah. or, or H H D humbuckers, and you split them. It's like uh, it's tinny almost. Yeah. Always used to it's get just, on my nerves. Yeah. So, but that's kind of supported. And the cool thing as well is that if you're using that for a high gain. Because it's split, it's still gonna wanna give you some feedback, yeah, but yeah. because it's using two split coils, it's a little bit less hissy yeah. than a, your traditional single coil sure, would be. Sure. So then I suppose position three is just an extension of two in the sense it's all both in all the time, so it's fatter. So if I go between the two. Just a thicker version with a bit more breakup from yeah. the bridge pickup. Nice. It's a really usable double humbucker sound. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's not like warm and dull. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's super percussive. As you, yeah, as you exactly. Because I'm all about the, from the Nuno influence, it's yeah. all about the percussion. Um, then four, I guess, is like a warmer version of two. So if I go straight to four. It's just a little bit, um, I suppose it's warmer and thicker than two. This is two. And this is four. You notice the difference? Bit more mid range. Yeah, that's more ST type yeah. without mentioning a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the other one, the second position two, is, is more of a, a T type. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's harder sounding. Yeah, yeah. More yeah. bass, more treble. Yeah. And this one is a little more. Yeah, yeah it's, it's warmer, thicker yeah. in the mid range. Yeah. So yeah. I really like this one, particularly with reverb, because it's got that lovely kind of. So yeah, I really think that sounds nice. It's Absolutely. And it's dynamic, you know, when you dig in, you, it really bites back, which I like. And then, of course, the neck pickup is it's just a nice thick sort of. And again, when you put a bit of high gain on it. It's, it sings. It sounds even more singing coily yeah. as soon as you go up with your gain. That's yeah, yeah, weird. Yeah. I mean, like totally clean, you would say, yeah, it's a sort of a clear sounding humbucker. Mm -hmm. And you go up with your gain, Saturation. It thins out it's, a bit it's just almost. like you get this glassy, you know, super nice presence to it without getting 
too much on your nerves because yeah. a real singing course, super high gain, you will have yeah. to be careful with your settings in your hand. Absolutely. Probably. And I think we, we, we toyed around with um, rail pieces and pole pieces on the pickup uh, and actually found that the rails, for some reason, do do that. It gives you that yeah. a little bit more clarity with more gain. Um, at least we, we, we took two pickups exactly the same spec, magnet, uh, output. All right. And that was the difference. So that's why we Crazy. went with this. Sure. Um, so that's that guitar. And again, it's, I just think it's great. Really, really enjoy it. And the neck on these are thicker than any of the Chapman. And that's exactly my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I have big hands. And um, I got a, the reason is I got a 55 Custom Shop Strat a couple of years ago. You got used to it. And the neck is so big <laughs> that like, I'd go back to my other guitar and go, what are these, what is this? <laughs> so I kind of went for a halfway house. <laughs> Something that is thicker than the others in the range, but it's the rolled edges, and basically it feels like a proper solid yeah. neck, which is what I really wanted. So it's really lovely to just grab onto it. It's like, Absolutely. Oh, that's what she feels. <laughs> Sorry. 